Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's product briefing. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us, and we hope you can gain some valuable and practical insights from this webinar to manage and secure your remote devices. We are very excited for today's event and are happy that you can join us. Before we go any further, let's introduce our speakers for today. Uh, my name is Troy Knitsky, and I'm a part of Absolute's customer success team. And uh, I work with customers to help ensure they get the most out of Absolute through sharing of best practices, introductions to new features, functionality, and helping to troubleshoot challenges and roadblocks they may face. Joining me today is my co-speaker, Murray Melschuk. Yeah, he's a senior technical product manager here at Absolute. Uh, Murray, would you like to share more about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Troy. Um, hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here as well. Um, so my name is Murray Malischuk, and I'm a product manager at Absolute. Um, I'm always looking for ways to, you know, address the real-world challenges our customers face and finding opportunities in which Absolute can help to address those better. Uh, here there are the webinar objectives that we'd like to address. We'll start by talking about the ways that you can remotely block access to a device. Then we'll pivot to talking about data and review how you can make encrypted data unrecoverable. We'll then close out with talking about how you can permanently remove data off a device should the need arise. And we'll conclude our time with everyone by answering questions you may have submitted to us about topics discussed throughout our presentation today. Let's kick things off by talking about some of the issues you might be facing in managing your remote devices. So this would include challenges such as a time-sensitive task to secure critical data on device, or working towards data regulatory compliance, or needing to restrict users from operating a device and doing that in today's remote environment are our new normal. So the features that we're going to be talking about next are great tools to help you resolve issues like that. And uh, here are the three security actions that we're going to discuss today to help you out with these challenges. So device freeze, which is about restricting access to a device, device wipe, where data becomes inaccessible to anyone with that device, and data delete, which removes data completely. These three features can be used by themselves for targeted action or used together to resolve more complicated scenarios. The first security action that we would like to discuss is our device freeze functionality. It's one of our core features at Absolute and it can do a lot of heavy lifting in terms of immediately blocking access to a device. It's an oldie, but it's a goldie. So what is Absolute's device freeze? It's where you can block access to a device and display a customized message to that end user advising why it's frozen. Now, this message can explain that a device is needing to be patched, the lease has expired, and needs to be returned, and, and so on. As the reason behind a freeze may be time sensitive, uh, this freeze effect uh, takes effect immediately. And even if the end user is online with the device at the time, um, they're logged out of the, their session right away and shown the freeze message advising next steps. We also have uh, different ways on how you can deploy a freeze, uh, whether it freezes on the next call into our console, frozen on a scheduled date, or automatically frozen with an offline policy. Also, within the, the console itself, you can submit a freeze one device at a time, select multiple devices through a report, or bulk freeze by uploading a CSV file. So there's lots of different ways to action based off your preference. Now, before we go any further and walk through more of our device freeze, it's important to note that we will be showing the workflow of our latest device freeze functionality. So if you're seeing a different UI than we, what you are normally used to, it's because your console is on our classic version of freeze. Uh, we are actually going to be migrating all of our customers to this latest device freeze in the coming months so that you can get all the functionality that you are seeing today. Our technical support and customer success teams will be reaching out soon um, with the next steps and details of how this will be, un be done for you. And we'll have more information about this for you at the end of our webinar. Uh, Murray, anything that you'd like to pitch in about our latest device freeze? Yeah, maybe just one or two points that you haven't, you know, covered just to address a little bit further is some of the benefits is in the role-based access control, as, as you touched on. And there, what we've done is really enhanced and look for ways in which, um, you know, following some good customer feedback, expanding our uh, the control, which we can uh, put in the hands of a user's to allow a, a user to either freeze or unfreeze the device. So we think this is a great way in which if you wanted to have a better delegation model between people in your organization, um, that would be one way to do it. So there's a great way in which, you know, moving to the our, our next feature sets, really enhancing that capability. Uh, another key area, and it's touched on here, is the API. Um, as we look to, you know, extend and enhance our platform, uh, one of the key things that we're always thinking about is making sure that we're keeping core functional actions and capabilities and we're making them accessible through APIs. So that's another key benefit that I'd like to call out 
And then, as, as you mentioned, Troy, we will be reaching out to you in the coming weeks for those, for those customers who are still on our um, uh, legacy or classic feature set to, to help you uh, bring you across. Thanks, Ray. So now, uh, would you like to take us through some of the, the different parts of our device freeze? Yeah, certainly. So, as uh, as Troy mentioned, you know, device freeze is one of our core uh, core capabilities. And when we think of freeze, there's several different types or methods about how you can actually uh, exercise this. So we'll be talking about all of them today. So these are just to reiterate: uh, on-demand freeze, so that you know, freeze that takes shape immediately, a scheduled freeze, and an offline freeze rule. So um, let's let's get into our first one of those and. We jump into the uh, console here, and the first thing we really need to do is find and select the devices of interest. So we go to our asset management page and select those devices which we want to take the action on. And at the top there, as we kind of nicely laid out, is all the key actions um, that you might want to take. So let's go ahead and click the freeze action. Now, the first thing that you're asked to do here is you know, tailor a message or, or build out a, a freeze message. So this might be something you've already had, um, or, or, and there's lots of flexibility to go and create new content here. So this is really, I would say, a key part in, in exercising this capability because it allows you to customize um, that message to, to your particular use case. Um, and it also provides the user a really great call to action about what they need to do to, with the device when it becomes frozen. And, you know, as Troy mentioned, but just to reiterate, there's a lot of common scenarios, whether it's, you know, device reclamation at the end of the school year where you want to make sure that those devices are coming in and they contact the right, the right uh, help desk support person to do so, um, whether you are onboarding or uh, offboarding certain staff members and you want to use freeze as a, as a mechanism to ensure the security of that device while in transit or approve a, or start or start and kick off a process. So those are some great um, kind of out of the box ways in which you know other customers are using freeze um, that would also be applicable. But the key point is the the message provides a lot of flexibility. And Mary, if you don't mind, I'd like to share best practice. Um, a lot of our customers, um, what they do is they plan for all use cases as to why they would need to. to a device freeze and then they create custom messages for those in advance so this way they're ready to go with appropriate messaging should the situation arise and just plug and play so some examples of this can include uh, devices need to get security patches by a certain date a device leaving a geofence or even a notification for an expiring device lease yeah thank you Troy. so moving next um we're clicking through and the next thing you need to decide in this flow is which type of freeze we're going to select and the two um, that are provided are the on-demand or the just-in-time real-time uh, freeze or the scheduled freeze. So on-demand is, is the freeze when you want that freeze to take, um, take place immediately as soon as that device checks in on its next call. Um, so you can imagine if there's an FF scenario or a missing device scenario, you just want to make sure that that device is locked down, this would be the one you'd want to apply. Um, scheduled freeze is a little more nuanced in that it will set a freeze for some future date. So this would be a great, um, great freeze to apply if you had a period of time where you knew that device should not be accessed and you'd want to make it inaccessible. And so for, you know, in a school environment you know, over the summer, over the summer periods, um, that's a great, great scenario where this plays out. But you can think of others too as, as towards your business. Then the next piece is we want to enter some information about who you want to notify when that freeze takes uh, happens. So this is the opportunity to enter that information about who should become aware when the device is frozen, unfrozen, just to track and manage the state through the console. And that's it. Um, then at this point in time, you've submitted the freeze and those the devices as they call in on their regular cadence will come and pick up those actions and, and, and take effect. Um, in order to manage and track the actions overall where you want to go and do this is in the event history report. So let's go there and here you see all of the actions that you've submitted. So you can go and find the particular device and freeze request that you've submitted. You can track to see where it is in its flow, whether or not the device has picked it up, if the device is frozen, so on and so forth. So this provides a great way just to manage and track the action. And then 
we need to think about how we want to unfreeze the device. Um, so we provide two, two fundamental ways in which a user would go and do this. And so you can do this remotely via the console. Um, and so if your device has internet connectivity, um, you know, this is a great way. You can just run that hands off, um, really apply the freeze and unapply the freeze in quick succession. Similarly, the device will have to check in and then it'll go uh, unfreeze. Uh, another key way is this uh, is a device passcode. And so the device passcode is something that you would um, you, you could supply to the end user depending on the circumstance um, to, to allow them to unfreeze the device and they enter that passcode with the device in hand. And looking in here, I'm jumping into a uh, a custom report which we've created quite quickly. What we've done is we've added some of the key fields, the device freeze status column and the device freeze um, passcode column, just to provide a nice shorthand way in which you can quickly uh, see this information and then supply it. And so there's been, you know, a few of our customers are using this as a mechanism to, you can export it, this as a report. And for those um, people in your organization who might not have access to the console, but you'd like them to have them the capability to unfreeze devices as part of a help desk routine or, or what have you, um, you could you could do that quite easily here. And while Marie Murray is showing these columns within our main asset report, I want to point out you can actually add these data points to almost every other report in your console. So wherever you see the similar report UI, these freeze columns should be available, and that gives you great flexibility in the custom reports you build to work with and share with the members of your team.